It's Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, today teaching physics with baseball, and I'm going to teach you how to win at baseball very easy. It's the reverse pitch. Now, what do I mean by that? Pitching backwards. Curveballs and change-ups. Listen to this now. Felix Hernandez throws a change-up, always going to be fun. Something deeply fascinating about a pitch that appears to do things our brains are pretty certain aren't possible. When he throws that, it's doing something that he's throwing it backwards. Normally you throw it this way to do the right hand spin. He's throwing it when he goes with a backwards spin and the ball reacts to the ether violently when you spin it backwards. Alright, anybody who understands magnetism can understand this quite simply. Every single thing in the universe is covered with electrons because electrons surround all nuclear nucleuses so every single thing there is, is surrounded by electrons. All the things in the air, all the molecules you're breathing right now, everything is coated with electrons. It's like paint, painting everything. Now, the atmosphere is coated with electrons. The whole atmosphere is just all solid big ball of electrons. This guy has a ball here that's coated with electrons. Right? This is what like a little electron is. That's, a, that's a, my representation of an electron. So this whole ball is coated with electrons. As he throws it and he spins it this way, these electrons try to force through the atmosphere into these electrons. They do spin them backwards. So it, when it pushes this electron, comes spinning this way, bang, it hits it, says, get out of the way. And the guy says, no, you get out of the way. And he says, no, you get out of the way. And he goes down this way, this guy goes up that way. Simple as that. Now, when he gets past the midpoint, because he's still pushing, get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way. He gets past the midpoint, he comes over here. Now, this guy says, you get out of the way. Move, 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 move. I'm coming. It pushes it to make it spin more. So now it drops like a rock. But that's because of the spin this way. Now, if the spin was backwards, it would it would do all kinds of crazy things because it would be scrubbing against the ether down here, making like lifting it more or less, keeping it from dropping. And it would probably start to turn against itself due to the axis of the Earth. A reverse spin is, is a devastating thing, it, just as Venus is re reverse spin. And I, that I understand too based on the right hand rule. Everything is based on the right hand rule. So um, just because you can win at baseball, you still should understand the right hand rule. <laughs> Watch this guy. Boop. This guy's saying, what the hell is going on? He's using a reverse spin. You watch him. They, they all use that reverse. Watch this guy. The ball ends up behind the guy. <laughs> the catcher catches it behind the guy's leg. That thing's spinning like, uh, and that is again, he's spinning it backwards. All right, now you get down to true lefties. Listen to this, what it says. All right, whoops. One of the more interesting comparisons is between two pitchers who use their curveballs very differently. Cole Hamels, Drew Pomerantz, both saw movement increases of more than three inches in their curveballs from 2013 to 2014. In fact, Hamels and Pomerantz were the only pitchers who saw an increase of more than two inches on both the horizontal and vertical planes. The two lefties, they're lefties, that's why it's a natural thing for them, had the largest increases in horizontal movement among their peers and both were among the top four when it came to increases in vertical movement as well. The movement is a result of pushing against ether. When you go backwards against it, you are pushing hard. When you're flowing with it with a right hand spin, you know, you're going good. Now, if your natural throw is with a left hand, you're naturally going to spin that ball to the left. Now the same thing is, is, is affects footballs too. This is a right hand rule. It's not something specific to this. It's specific to science and physics. And that is because it rolls off to the right from the electrons. It, you know, I've shown it in the demonstration, I believe, and uh, I hope you understand what I showed. All right, if you're into this and you want to learn more about this, this is a fabulous, fabulous paper. This is very, very detailed about everything about the right-hand rule. But that's all they talk about. They don't talk about lefties. And they show all the spins and the axis, the direction. It's all, everything is a right-hand rule. Everything is a right-hand rule. 
and so this is what this whole article is about and it shows how to do this and what a fastball is is straightforward spinning right hand then you go to the axis is to the earth and the deeper you go 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 like that the curve or curve or curve and the slider 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 and the screwer 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 that's what happens so there's a lot to this but it's really not a lot but I mean look at how deep they get into this this is better than they do in physics I'm telling you it's amazing I find that like, this is funny this is really it's not it's funny but it's sad these are the kind of things that people will invest all kinds of time and money and all this business in same thing with horse racing horse racing I found out is the only place where they have a database of what the horse eats and what he poops and how he goes to the bathroom and uh, you know uh, what bacteria is in him and you know uh, what is in his blood and all the blood chemistry and we don't have that I can't find any database of human being having any of this. There's no normals for humans. No normal that I can find. If you can find a, a database that tells me what is the enzyme should be in your body, what is the blood chemistry that should be in your body, what is the bacteria that should be in your body, and what is the, you know, if there's parasites and things like that, those are three things. And then what is your, your um, health conditions? Then we'd know. But you got to have something like this to do all that work baseball or horse racing or something but anyway it comes down here this is it's really really interesting as hell and uh, you know there's speed and the spin rate and the direction and the volume and a bit bit of boom and all these kind of things very 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 amazing you know the duration of flight the drop the gravity the spin the drop due to gravity this is more than they do about any of the other research I mean CERN could learn a lot from this <laughs> They just smashing things together with a big hammer. Okay, this is uh, this is the crux of the matter: is that the entire universe is filled with ether. These are negative electrons. Everything that you know of is coated with electrons. There is not a single thing on the face of this planet that is not surrounded by electrons. Every atom has orbits of electrons surrounding the nucleus every surface is coated with electrons every molecule of air is coated with electrons the air itself is loaded with electrons as you walk through you collect them they are free floating ether electrons you collect them as static occasionally when it's dry and they will collect on you as because you have moisture for them to go to and then when you touch anything that's grounded they will jump from you to that better place and make a spark from you those are electrons now let's talk about the right hand rule now that you understand about the electrons are everywhere and the ether is electrons their ether electrons are in everything the electrons are ubiquitous they're every single thing everywhere and electrons literally are light they are the particles that are leaving the sun, spinning towards Earth in the darkness of space. They are dark matter and dark energy. They're still there. When they come to Earth, they collide. That's what's going on. Now, some objects are magnetic, and they have strong fields. Some objects are not very, very magnetic. They don't have strong clouds of electrons surrounding them. So, what would happen if you had a magnetic baseball? A magnetic ball will create more reaction. This thing is coated with negatives. You see those little, little green spots all around it? Everything you have, and there's also green spots all over here too, because everything there is, is coated with electrons. So that thing is just a ball coated with electrons. Now, if you spin that ball in, a mag in, 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 a, in a, the air, it is going to create push against anything that has electrons and everything has electrons so all the air that it's pushing through these electrons on this surface are pushing up against these electrons which is just floating here saying I'm just hanging out here I'm just doing nothing but laying around here well this guy says well I'm coming through get out of the way and the guy said, well, I really don't feel like getting out of the way. Why don't you get out of the way? And they fight each other. And this guy pushes the ball that way. This guy pushes the ether that way. And you end up with a shock wave as it comes through. Now, it's still pushing the ether, 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 pushing the ether. And then all of a sudden you hit this point, And now the ether pushes it. Because now your negative is here 
going against negatives here. So instead of of, of pushing against it and trying to fight it in both directions coming this way and the negative pushing back now it's going this way so it's it's flowing with the negative that is the natural intention of the right hand rule now if you spin that ball backwards you're going to have all kinds of things happen extreme interactions now why do I talk about this well you could make that thing if you put more magnetism on that ball it's going to react differently I mean, you could have a magnetic ball gate here. <laughs> I mean, same thing, baseballs, footballs, any kind of ball. They all spin, and even, even um, bullets, they all spin to the right. That is just a natural intention. And then you have the axis of the Earth. So you can spin it this way on this axis. Or you can spin it this way on this axis, or backwards on that axis. And when it does, it fights the ether, or it goes with the ether, or however. And sometimes it's sideways, this way, that way. There's all kinds of things. And those are sliders and curves and screwballs and fastballs and, you know, sinkers. And, you know, all these different things are reactions to electrons fighting other electrons. Now, what does that tell you? Cars, airplanes, all of that stuff has to push through the ether. Same thing. So if you have strong negatives all over the front of your airplane wing, maybe that's not the best thing. Maybe if you had a positive surface facing forward, maybe that would let the electrons flow easier by you. I don't know. But these are the things that they're not taking into account because they can't talk about ether because they poo-pooed ether. Now they're trying to say, oh, we thought maybe there's a, we think we figured out a fifth dimension to everything a whole new thing well they've known about this since plato or even before that so they just tried to drop it not to kind of say they discovered it it's nothing but ether and everything in the universe is completely saturated with ether it is the particles that are thrown off of the sun and they are electrons they have a mass and they only show that mass when they collide with something that has a nucleus so that it has the positiveness to pull that electron in to cause a collision. That's what it's all about. Okay, well, I'm starting a new channel and uh, it's going to be called Mud Fossil University Classroom. We're gonna, I'm going to try to organize this stuff. It's been a mess, I know that. And I, and I did it partly on purpose because I want people to go and look. I don't want them to say, oh, I just want to look at this, I just want to look at that. I get people complaining when I try to show something in the physics realm and they give me thumbs down because they want to see something in the mud fossils. And most of them are, are, want to see something that somebody that believes that the earth is flat. And I'm not going to ever believe that and I'm never going to discuss that ever. I don't want anybody... To, fighting me about my research because I won't say the earth is flat. Alright, so we're going to, and, and you're not going to be allowed to be in Mud Fossil University classroom. We're not going to have people arguing about something that is so obvious that if you, all you can say is, oh, that it doesn't exist, doesn't exist, there's no space station, there's no outer space, there's no Mars, there's no rockets, there's no nothing, there's no comets, you're, all, you're just a jerk for saying all these things. Well, we're not going to have that in the classroom. All right, and I'm the authority there, so thumb me down, doesn't matter.